What's up guys, welcome to Vintage Genetics, where it is all about classic bodybuilding of course. And in this workout I am training with one of my clients who I coach for a bodybuilding competition. His name is Jais, he is from the Netherlands and he will actually be doing a man's physique contest as his first competition. So I recently started doing coaching, both online coaching and face-to-face -face coaching for people who live in the Netherlands for contests or just to get in good shape in general since I now have more time for it and I am more experienced than I was before. So now I do feel comfortable doing that type of service and coaching. And it is available on the website right now. Right now there's still the contest coaching and the regular coaching will be available very soon, which you can already send me an email to wesleyvissers at hotmail.com or check the description box for my email if you are interested in it and want more information. But back to the workout. In this workout I will show you exactly what I do to work on my back thickness because it has improved quite a lot since my last contest already. So first we start out with a lat pull down behind the neck. This means you target your traps and your middle back thickness, your upper back, instead of just your lats if you pull it in front of your head. So that is the first step to working on the back thickness. And then the next and last pull down of this workout will be a V bar pull down or a narrow grip pull down. And this is a really awesome exercise to really stretch out those lats, but at the same time use a rowing movement to contract the back. And this contraction is exactly what you need to work on the back thickness. Just look at my form during this exercise. So I stretch out all the way at the top, really feeling that stretch in the lats and in my entire back, then using my elbows, really consciously pulling my elbows down and back, contracting the back muscles. So this will really work the lower back and the middle back thickness, which is exactly what I want to work on. And then we move on to some pure rowing movements. This is the wide grip row. This is a more difficult version compared to the regular seated row in my opinion. You have less strength because the further your arms and hands are away from your body, the more difficult of movement becomes. At least that's what Dorian Yates said and we can all agree that his back was pretty good. But anyway, this wide grip row really also works the back thickness and the contraction here can be done on two different ways. You can either contract your traps, pull back your shoulder blades and really focus on the traps or you can again, as I did with the V-bar pull down, focus on pulling those elbows backwards and not only contract the traps but also contract the lower and middle back which is the most difficult part for most people to get developed. So that is exactly why I'm doing it this way. However, at the same time, this exercise does become a lot more difficult to perform and to do even though it looks the exact same way as you normally would do it, but because you're consciously moving with your elbows, pulling with your elbows instead of your purely your traps, it becomes a much more difficult exercise because you really are targeting those muscle fibers and the angles of those muscles that are usually not working and are not used to such a high load, such a high weight. So when you use those, you get tired more easily and the explosive power isn't there as usual because your traps, of course, are much stronger on their own than those little lower back and middle back muscles. And as you saw and see in this set, I am using a belt. I'm doing this because the weight is going up progressively and I don't want to risk pulling my lower back in any possible way. What I really want to work, and you can really see it right here, is I'm pulling back my shoulder blades and contracting not only the traps, but also the lower and middle back. So wearing a belt prevents me from using too much spinal erectors and preventing me from injuring that spine because I want that spine to be fully healthy and functional and not get injured while I'm in my contest prep at the moment. 
And now it is time for another row, a seated row. This is a different kind compared to the wide grip row. This one actually, you're able to pull your elbows even more down because the closer your hands are together, of course, the more easier it is to pull back and to pull towards your body, your elbows. And again, this really works the middle back. But bodybuilding is all about hitting different angles of the same muscle. So it looks like a similar exercise, but because of the difference in grip width, you do hit different muscles in the back with different stresses. So just imagine that the closer you grip um, a handle like this, the more you might hit the outer part of your middle back and the wider the grip, the more you hit the inner part of your middle back. So hitting them both using those two handles will make sure you develop your entire back. Because remember, the back is a huge area with a lot of different intricate muscles which you all want to be able to showcase and work. And of course, what I usually like to do is at least one unilateral exercise. And a unilateral exercise means that you use one arm at the same time. And guys, this is especially important for you if you have a smaller muscle on one side compared to the other. For example, if your left lat or the left part of your back is thinner, is smaller, less wide than the right side, then you should always start out using the left slash weaker smaller side. If you can do 10 reps with the weak side and you're going to failure and you go to the right side and you can feel you can do 10 reps but you can actually do a couple of reps more, don't do those extra reps. You have to match the reps of your weak side with your strong side. This way your weaknesses, your imbalances will disappear over time. Yes, it does take time as bodybuilding always does does but it will be worth it in the end because everybody has disproportionate body parts some are bigger than the others a bigger bicep a bigger tricep you know it really depends on your genetics firstly and your job for example but with bodybuilding it is such a beautiful thing that it's basically you sculpting your body the way you want it to be so no matter how big the imbalance is no matter how disproportionate your body is at the start you can always fix this up by sculpting your body in the gym using that iron as your tool anyway I'm wearing a belt once again and I put the bench up a little bit so I can actually stretch down deeper and if you look at my form you can see I'm not going up and down straight but I'm actually going down and going up and backwards so the way that my lat works you can literally see the pulling not only upwards but also backwards that's a natural movement of those back muscles which is something you want to follow when doing an exercise then this one will be an interesting, a paused deadlift. It actually is a deadlift not from the ground, but from a couple of inches above the ground. And the reasoning for this is because I don't want to impact my legs, I just want to impact my back. And for me, because I'm pretty tall, I like to have the bar a little bit higher. However, when I'm training legs and doing sumo deadlifts, for example, I do start from the ground because that is a situation where you want to train your legs. But now I want to focus purely on my back. Of course, you might think this makes the exercise easier, but there's two things you must keep in mind. We are bodybuilders, at least most of us are. So we want to train the muscle and we don't concern ourselves with the maximum weight we can pull. So first of all, the leg drive that most people use during a deadlift is pretty much gone because the bottom part of the movement where you use that leg drive is not there. And secondly, the time under tension is increased by actually focusing on the negative portion of the movement as well. So just look at how I'm doing these deadlifts right here. I'm going up, but when I'm going down, I'm not dropping the weight down, but I'm keeping the tension 
on my back because remember during the negative portion of an exercise of a rep you do the most damage to the muscle and the more damage you do to a muscle the more it will respond and the more growth will occur and honestly this is one of the most effective exercises for me to grow my back thickness especially the lower back but it also works the lats as you can see the entire back is tight the entire back is contracted and that is exactly what should happen when doing an exercise so it stays contracted and tensed up not only during the positive portion of the movement but also during the negative portion and this already feels really heavy despite it being a relatively lightweight for most if you've already done a lot of exercises for the back and then doing it this way you will feel the difference so if you want to work on your back thickness do please try this exercise and you will feel it for yourself and then guys and then it is time to build the biceps and we're starting out with the close grip easy curl bar uh easy curl bar curls you know a really long name for a really nice exercise actually this works the bicep peaks because the closer your hands are together when performing a barber curl the more the tension shifts to the outside of the biceps remember the biceps have two bicep heads and if the outer bicep head grows bigger has a bigger mass than the inside you will create a peak because the outside will then you know tower over the inside and create the famous mount everest arnold bicep peak and for most people who are having trouble who are saying oh i have bad bicep genetics don't let that fool you and don't let that hold you back because you can always do more you always have more potential than you think i had really bad body parts when i just started out but i've already improved upon almost all of them through hard work and sculpting the body in the gym if you enjoy working out you will fix every single imbalancement in your body for sure and that is also why i'm doing these hammer curls to work on the bicep thickness you know the bicep peak is pretty decent but i want more bicep thickness working on the brachialis which is the muscle running beneath the two bicep heads so if that one grows the bicep thickness grows as well and then the last bicep exercise of today the cable bicep curls so this is basically you know a very nice finisher to work on the bicep peak but you're also keeping the tension on the biceps at all times because you're working with machine here so you can see that even though my bicep is fully getting stretched the tension is still there so that's exactly what you want to work on you want to make sure that when you stretch your bicep when you contract your bicep uh, throughout the entire range of motion the tension is there because if it disappears it is a bad way of performing the exercise here mind muscle connection also plays a role because you can contract your biceps normally or you can contract it with fears thoughts creating a bigger bicep peak and i truly believe that the more you think about the muscle that you're training the more you are able to sculpt it the way you want it to look consistency and patience and good form are all parts of being a successful bodybuilder guys so first we did the cable curl the first set with just one cable but then because this one was freed up we decided to use two cables so this is basically a front double bicep that you're doing when i'm doing this i'm constantly practicing this pose looking in the mirror seeing if i'm standing correctly while doing the exercise which makes it a great bodybuilding exercise for people who are doing a contest and speaking of doing contests i will make a video telling you exactly why and when i think you should do a bodybuilding contest because after my last q a a lot of people have asked me hey you know you mentioned this in your q a about when you should be ready when you should feel ready when doing a bodybuilding competition so i will respond to that in more detail in a brand new video coming up i want to thank you for watching and don't forget to stay golden Ooh.
What's up guys, welcome to Vintage Genetics, where it is all about classic bodybuilding of course. And in this workout I am training with one of my clients who I coach for a bodybuilding competition. His name is Jais, he is from the Netherlands and he will actually be doing a man's physique contest as his first competition. So I recently started doing coaching, both online coaching and face-to-face -face coaching for people who live in the Netherlands for contests or just to get in good shape in general since I now have more time for it and I am more experienced than I was before. So now I do feel comfortable doing that type of service and coaching. And it is available on the website right now. Right now there's still the contest coaching and the regular coaching will be available very soon, which you can already send me an email to wesleyvissers at hotmail.com or check the description box for my email if you are interested in it and want more information. But back to the workout. In this workout I will show you exactly what I do to work on my back thickness because it has improved quite a lot since my last contest already. So first we start out with a lat pull down behind the neck. This means you target your traps and your middle back thickness, your upper back.